Welcome to my video on acid-base balance. This is a concept that you want to have a good understanding of as a nurse because you will definitely encounter it in practice. Being able to recognize acid-base imbalances early on will help to prevent serious physiological problems including death. In this video, I am going to cover the concept of acid-base balance by defining acid, base, pH, acidosis, and alkalosis, and the systems in place to maintain homeostasis. In part two, I will go over ABGs, the four acid-base imbalances, the common causes, and nursing interventions for each using case studies. Let's start by defining acid. Acids are compounds that release hydrogen ions in solution. In the equation here, carbonic acid is an acid because it releases a hydrogen ion to become hydrogen and bicarbonate. We have a lot of acids that are produced in our bodies as a byproduct of everyday metabolism. We have carbonic acid and other metabolic acids like sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, in our stomach, citric acid, lactic acid, phosphoric acid, and so on. All of these release hydrogen ions. Then a base is a compound that binds to hydrogen ions. In the same equation, bicarbonate is a base because it binds to hydrogen to become carbonic acid, which is released when we exhale as CO2 and water. Bicarbonate is a very common base electrolyte in our body and very important because with all of the hydrogen ions being released, we need something to neutralize them. pH is the hydrogen ion concentration in the body. Normal arterial blood has a pH of 7.35 to 7.45. This is the ideal hydrogen ion concentration for optimal cell functioning. When we have too many hydrogen ions, our pH goes down and our blood becomes acidic. This is called acidosis and can lead to death. When we have too little hydrogen ions, our pH goes up and our blood becomes alkaline. This is called alkalosis and can also lead to death. It is important to note the inverse relationship between the number of hydrogen ions and the pH. The higher the concentration, the lower the pH number less than 7.35. The lower the hydrogen ion concentration, the higher the pH number, greater than 7.45. Our bodies have three main processes that occur every day to keep our pH in that very narrow but normal range of 7.35 to 7.45. First, we produce acids. Like I said, acid production is a result of our cellular metabolism, and we produce two types of acids. Carbonic acid, which we excrete through our lungs as carbon dioxide and water, and the metabolic acids, which we excrete through our kidneys in urine. Second, we buffer or neutralize acids. We have a limited amount of bicarbonate and carbonic acid on standby for small changes in pH. So say our pH is going down, which means the number of hydrogen ions is increasing. Our bodies can then release bicarbonate to bind to the excess hydrogen ions and bring our pH back up to normal. And if our pH is up or the number of hydrogen ions is decreasing, our bodies can release carbonic acid to release hydrogen ions and bring our pH back down to normal. This happens for those slight changes in pH to keep it normal, but there is a limit to the buffers we have on standby. That's where the third process comes in. We can get rid of the hydrogen ions. Carbonic acid we can get rid of through our lungs as CO2 and water, and metabolic acids we can get rid of through our kidneys. So then the respiratory and renal systems become the main regulators of our pH. If we have too much carbonic acid, we can hyperventilate to blow off the acid in the form of CO2 to normalize pH. If we have too little carbonic acid, we can hypoventilate to hold on to CO2 and normalize pH. If we have too much metabolic acids, our kidneys can excrete the hydrogen ions or hold on to bicarb in our urine to normalize pH. 
If we have too little metabolic acids, we can hold on to hydrogen ions or excrete bicarb in our urine to normalize pH. As you can imagine, our respiratory system can work to normalize pH really fast. It's just a matter of changing the depth and rate of our breathing. The renal system takes a little longer. It can actually take hours to days to normalize pH. Sometimes one system can compensate for the other. If our pH isn't correcting through the respiratory system alone, the renal system can help it out. If our pH isn't correcting through the renal system, the respiratory system can jump in to help out. This is called compensation. But what if those processes fail? What if they don't work? What if the patient has COPD and can't get rid of CO2? What if they have kidney failure and can't filter electrolytes correctly? Well, that's when the patient is at risk for acidosis or alkalosis. And there are two types for each, respiratory or metabolic, because we have two types of acids, carbonic acid and metabolic acids. With acidosis, we have too many hydrogen ions. This causes hyperkalemia and is responsible for these signs and symptoms. You might notice there's a theme of slowing down, like hypotension, hyporeflexes, bradycardia, and weakness. With alkalosis, we have not enough hydrogen ions. This actually causes hypokalemia and hypocalcemia and is responsible for these signs and symptoms. You might notice a theme of speeding up with alkalosis, tachycardia, hyperreflexes, seizures, and tetany and twitching. With only a few exceptions, both metabolic and respiratory alkalosis signs and symptoms are the same. Same with metabolic and respiratory acidosis. And that's the end of part one. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out part two where I go into arterial blood gases and the four acid-base imbalances using real patient scenarios. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more 10-minute nursing videos.